Welcome to Lockfall Laboratories. Today I'll be launching a new series focused on how things work when it comes to locks, lock picking, and security. The interesting thing about locks is that they are like unique mechanical puzzles, some of which have very intricate designs. I hope to share the magic of understanding and solving these puzzles with you, mostly using 3D animations so that we can see inside the locks for what many lock pickers are visualizing in their minds. We will start with a basic house lock. You can see these on the front of residential and business doors almost everywhere. Let's first give a quick overview of the parts. Up front, we have the body of the lock, also called the Bible. Next, we have the core of the lock. This is the secret of any lock, and getting this to turn is the whole reason why locks exist. At the back of the core, there's always something attached, either a lever or a tailpiece, not shown here, but operates a deadbolt or other latch mechanism, which then opens your door or cabinet. We will get into this in another video where we discuss bypasses and alternate entry techniques and show how to prevent them. All right, let's take a peek inside. Here we can see the components. This particular type of lock is called a pin tumbler lock, and it has five chambers or pin sets. These are called the key pins. They vary in height and are matched to the key. You could think of these like a combination or entry code. If you could see into a lock like this, you could make a key and get inside. These ones are called the driver pins. They can all be the same height, but sometimes their height varies slightly so that the springs don't get stuck if a key pin is cut very low. The slight gap between the Bible and the core is called the shear line. If nothing is blocking this line, the core can then rotate and open the lock by operating the mechanism attached to the back of the core. Right now it is in the lock state where the core cannot be rotated because at least one pin is blocking movement. Let's first check out what an incorrect key will do. You can see here that the shear line is blocked and would not allow the core to rotate. Either the key pin or the driver pin is in the way. To put it another way, the points where the pins meet are not at the same point where the core meets the Bible. Now let's see what happens when we insert the right key. As you can see, the springs keep the pins pressed towards the key, and when lifted to the correct height, the break point between the pins lines up with the shear line. This then allows the core to rotate and the lock to open. Because of the relatively few designs available commonly in the US for residential homes, you might be wondering, Really, how many combinations are available on a basic lock like this? What are the chances my key is the same as my neighbor's? Commonly, key pins can have eight heights, and with five chambers or pin sets, this gives you about 32,000 combinations. However, those will reduce slightly if you eliminate some invalid key combinations, such as all the same codes, etc. Adding a sixth chamber bumps that up to 260,000 combinations, and adding just two more heights for each pin will push it to just about a million combinations. Some of these options are available on higher quality commercial locks, but typically not on a standard American residential lock. For this one, that's pretty much it. In future videos, I plan to go over how lock picking works, other entry techniques, and how you can guard your locks and security systems against them. I will also delve further into high security locks and how they work. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more. And consider subscribing if you want to be notified of future videos like this.